welcome everyone today i wanted to make a video about how to attempt graph questions specifically straight line graph questions in paper 4 of a level physics many students struggle to relate the concepts of y intercept x intercept and the gradient of the straight line with the equations that they have already studied in their syllabuses so the goal here is to basically understand how can you relate any of the equations in your syllabus in your different topics and try to get a straight line graph out of it if you can understand how to make a straight line graph out of any equation then you can also understand an already made straight line graph which is related to one of the equations that you have studied please note that in your paper 4 almost half of the questions or I might be exaggerating here but I do feel like five to six graphs minimum appear in your graph uh, in your paper four in one form or another so it's very imp important to get familiar with these graphs and it's a very important skill to be able to do questions that involve straight line graphs specifically so let's get started we'll go to the screen and understand the basics of straight line graphs first and then we'll look at the few equations in your own syllabus from where you can relate them to straight line graphs so let's get to the very basic and let's start y equals mx plus c most of the students are familiar with this thing what does this mean if you have a straight line graph where x is plotted on the x-axis y is plotted on the vertical axis and let's say you have a straight line graph like this we all know that the gradient of this graph which is found from this triangle is m in the equation and we all know that the y intercept is represented by the c in the equation so m is the gradient and or gradient is also called the slope and c is the y intercept since we know these two things we can now move on to some examples in your syllabus and look at some equations from where you can understand the relationship between the straight line graphs and the equations that you might have already studied so for example the equation of centripetal force mv square over r let's say i want to make a straight line graph that involves the centripetal force and the radius of the circular arc can i do that this is my straight line equation y equals mx plus c so there is no plus c in the equation that is very clear this is zero so the r line will have to pass through the origin because it has only the term which includes y and the term that includes mx now let's say i want to plot r on the x-axis in such a way that it will give me a straight line equation with centripetal force so i'll plot centripetal force on the y-axis so that will become my y i can plot 1 over r see that i can plot 1 over r on the x-axis and that will become my x let me show you how just look at this equation from a different perspective i'm not even rearranging it i'm just writing 1 over r separately in the bracket it's still the same equation but you can see that mass multiplied by the square of speed will become equal to the gradient because these two things are constant so stuff that is constant in the equation which is being multiplied by the quantity that is plotted on the x-axis becomes your gradient and the quantity that is plotted on the x-axis is equal to your x so i'll get a straight line graph and since i have no intercept this is plus zero the straight line graph will have a positive gradient and will pass through zero comma zero the gradient that will be equal to mv square so if i find the gradient of the graph i might be able to find one of the unknown quantities from the mass and velocity let's say if i know one of the other things that is one very simple example where an equation that doesn't look like a straight line equation but if you plot the right things on x-axis and y-axis you can get a straight line equation by the way this skill is obviously important for your paper 5 as well but Right now we are focusing on paper 4 equations and equations that you already know. 
Let's take a look at another example. We were given a graph of t square on the y-axis and r cube on the x-axis. And the graph was again a straight line passing through 0, 0. So t square uh, was the square of the period of the satellite or I think there were moon orbiting the planet. So uh, and that r is the radius of the orbit. How do two things are related? You should know it should immediately click in your head the equation of Kepler's law and that equation was t square is equals to 4 pi square over gm into r cube see if i plot t square on the y-axis that becomes my y if i plot r cube on the x-axis that becomes my x and this whole thing which is in brackets all of these things are constant for a particular satellite. The mass of the planet, the value of g, 4 and pi square, everything is a constant. So this whole thing becomes my m. What is the intercept you ask? Well, there is no intercept. So that's why the line passes through 0, 0. So you can see that the gradient of this line equal to 4 pi square over g m. And the question, if I remember this correctly, was to find the mass of the planet or the mass of the star which was in the center. And since you know 4 pi square and g, all of these are known. So you can easily find the gradient of the graph, put it equal to that gradient and you can find the mass of the planet or the star, whatever is required. We'll look at a few more examples. One very common example is from the topic of quantum physics. So this graph is very common in quantum physics. Kinetic energy maximum of the electrons released in photoelectric emission on the y-axis and on the x-axis we sometimes have frequency, sometimes we have 1 over wavelength, we'll get to the other one as well. So here you have this situation. Now how are these two things related? The equation should immediately click in your head. Energy of a photon, so this is usually taught like this, energy of a photon which is Planck constant into frequency equals work function energy plus kinetic energy maximum. But you'll see that kinetic energy maximum is not on the left hand side. But it doesn't matter. We can rearrange the equation to our liking or to the requirements of the graph. So we'll just rearrange the equation and write it down so that it matches the description of the general equation of the graph. And that will be somewhat like this. Now look at this equation. This kinetic energy maximum is on the y-axis so that becomes your y. F is on the x-axis so that becomes your x. Minus work function energy. That will be your y-intercept. But we'll talk about that later. This equation does not, this the graph does never has a y-intercept because it cannot theoretically go there. But we'll talk about that. And your Planck constant which is multiplied by f is going to become your gradient. So this equation has become y is equal to mx plus c and you can see that the intercept here is negative. The graph actually has this shape. It's a straight line graph with a positive gradient but it does not go beyond, uh, does not go beyond this point and why it does not? Because if the electrons are not released at all then how could they have kinetic energies at all? or elect if electrons are, does not have any kinetic energy that means it's just not released beyond below that there are no electrons released so this area is empty there is nothing below that however we do know now that the gradient of this graph is equals to Planck's constant so if you find the gradient you can estimate the value of the Planck constant from this graph which is a question which has been asked like two or three times in past papers Another thing which is important here to note is the x-intercept. This Does this value have any significance? Yes, it does. What is plotted on the, uh, the x-axis? It's the frequency of the photons arriving at the metal plate. Now remember, what does the x-intercept mean? x-intercept is the value of the quantity on the x-axis when the value of the quantity on the y-axis is equal to zero. So when kinetic energy maximum is zero, which means that the electron is just released or is about to be released, it will be that value of the frequency of the photon. You should know that 
this value is called the threshold frequency so you see you can relate straight line equations to different straight line graphs another version of this graph is also there and let's just talk about that so we have kinetic energy maximum on the y-axis and on and on the x-axis one over lambda is plotted well all you need to do is just modify the above equation you need to just replace frequency by speed of light over lambda and that will become your new equation look at this ek max and then instead of frequency you have c over lambda so there is that and then you have minus work function energy now 1 over lambda is plotted on the x-axis so 1 over lambda will be my x h into c this whole thing will be my gradient because that is multiplied by x this is plotted on the y-axis that will be my y and you can see the y-intercept which these graphs do not have again we'll get the same shape but now here is an important thing what does this gradient equal gradient will now be equal to as we have already seen from the equation the product of Planck constant and the speed of light another thing what is the significance of the x-intercept what does this value mean well it's that value of 1 over lambda where you can say that the wavelength is equal to the threshold wavelength or that wavelength of the photon where the electrons are just released from the plate just bare minimum energy to escape and then after that they have no kinetic energy so that's what this value of the graph means that's it that's all this video was about uh, i'll try to get as many videos uh, as possible and i'm thinking of the last minute tips that i need uh, to put out before exam if you have any suggestions do comment them below um, i will be posting a lot of content about paper 5 as well because you have a good gap before that paper so you should be able to benefit from those as well all right i'll see you in the next one